Hello and welcome back to another very, very sunny Manchester again for the second in the Pi Camera Library series. My apologies, it's taken a while to get back to this, but life gets in the way. We'll try and make this a slightly more regular thing from now on. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the setup that we're going to be using today. So, here we have a Raspberry Pi Model 3 and attached to it a rather odd looking camera. I'm going to try and go through as many of the different camera modules that are available as possible in this series. This one is an Adafruit spy camera. Um, it's a V1 camera module effectively. Use no difference to the regular V1 module. The only difference here is that the circuitry is all pushed down to the end of the ribbon cable, which means that the camera itself is this teeny tiny little thing at the top here. So I'll pop that back on there. I'll try and put a link to that in the video description. You can't see what the camera is looking at at the moment, but that's absolutely fine. We'll do a big reveal later. So let's get started on the Pi desktop. Now, if you're used to programming in Python, you're probably used to using the idle environment. I'm not a huge fan of this, so today we're going to be sticking with the command line, which is my favorite environment. I'd suggest people try and get used to the command line. It's a wonderfully powerful, productive tool. So we'll have a command line over there, and we'll have a file browser over here so we can see what files we're producing. And today I'll use the nano editor. So we're going to create a script called camera1.py. Okay, first hint, uh, we're going to be using we're going to be using the Pi Camera library, spelled P-I Camera. Don't call your script PyCamera.py, otherwise Python is going to be horribly confused between my library and your script. So we'll call our script camera1.py. We'll start off importing sleep from time. Time is part of the Python standard library. It's a module that includes all sorts of functions for getting the time, uh, setting the time, I think, formatting the time. And in our case, the function that we want is sleep. This pauses your script for the specified number of seconds. The next thing we're going to import is PI camera from the Pi camera library. That's P capital C capital. Unfortunately, capitals do matter. Uh, like so many languages, Python is case sensitive. First thing we're going to do is initialize the camera. This is something you only ever want to do once in your script. I would suggest uh, you put this at the top of your script and leave a gap between that and any other lines because if you repeat this line, you will get errors. You can't initialize the camera more than once in your script. For that matter, you can't have more than one script at a time using the camera. So that initializes the camera. And once it's initialized, we can call methods on that camera thing. So we're going to call start preview. That's going to show what the camera is looking at on the screen. After we've done that, we'll sleep five seconds. That means our script will pause here. It'll do nothing for five seconds. Then we'll capture test.jpg. So capture is going to cause it to take a picture, take an image of the current thing it's looking at and store it in the given file name. This is quoted because it's a string. In Python, strings can be quoted with either single quotes or double quotes. Doesn't matter. Um, well, there are some subtle differences, but we'll come to those in due course. <coughs> For now, it doesn't matter which. Take your pick, double or single quotes. And finally, we'll stop preview, which will shut down the preview that we started earlier. Our script will finish, the camera will close down, and we'll be back to the command line. Now, uh, we need to save this. Uh, the equivalent of save in nano is control O. You can see down here, hat O. Hat is just short up for control. So if I hold down control O, file name to write camera one, that's fine. So we'll just hit enter. Now, oh, there's our script appearing in the file browser. Now, at this point, we could quit nano to run this from the command line, but actually it's more productive if we open up a new tab. So we have file new tab. Now we've got two command lines in tabs. And a quick way to switch between these is you hold down control and do page up and page down, and you can flip between the command lines very quickly. Now to run this, <coughs> let's just do ls. That lists all the files so we can see our file is there. We can use Python 3 to run this. There are two somewhat incompatible versions of Python around, the earlier Python 2 and the later Python 3. At this point, there's very little point if you're learning Python for the first time in learning Python 2. Uh, you may as well just learn 3. There's almost nothing that is too only at this point. Almost everything's been ported over to Python 3. And it's a slightly more sane variant of the language, so we'll stick with Python 3. Unfortunately, 
it's still not the default. So if you just run Python on its own, you do get Python 2. You can run Python 3, and then we get Python 3. So we're going to run our script with Python 3, camera1.py. Oh, time for another command line hint. If I type Python 3 cam and then hit tab, it completes the rest for me because nothing else in the directory begins with cam. <clears throat> so let's see what the camera is looking at. Oh, look, it's a shameless plug for the Manchester Raspberry Jam. <clears throat> Slightly dimly lit because there's a window in the corner of the image there. Ah, so we paused for five seconds. It took a picture and that appeared in our file browser. <clears throat> now, we can double click on that uh, to view it. There's our picture, very nice. Or we could view it from the command line with gpic view, test.jpg, which does the same thing. So that's capturing an image to a file using Pi Camera. Let's go and have a look at video. So we switch back to our editor. Captures the command for taking a still image, but we want to record a video. So we'll replace that with camera.start recording test.h264. These extensions determine the type of file that Pi Camera will produce. So JPEG will produce a JPEG image. There are other options like ping, bitmap, GIF, but generally speaking for camera pictures, you really, really want to stick with JPEG. Um, JPEG is the only one that's hardware accelerated. It's by far the, the um, best compressed format when it comes to photographic images. Uh, ping is generally favored for things like technical drawings that have hard edges and so on and so forth. Uh, as for video, H.264 is uh, one of the two options that you have. The other is MJPEG. Um, MJPEG will come to in future videos. It's, it's useful for some things, but generally I wouldn't use it if you're just recording video. H.264 is a slightly odd format uh, in as much as it only records video. So what we're producing here is just video. It cannot incorporate audio in this file. And the reason for this is the heritage of the Pi's camera module. The Pi camera module uh, comes from a long line of mobile phone cameras. And if you think about what you want in a mobile phone camera, typically you'll want the camera to record visuals while the microphone goes and records some audio and then you mux the two together, as it's called. You're essentially mixing them together into a single file. So what the camera module here produces is only video. Um, <clears throat> and H.264, as I say, is a, is a video-only format. So we'll start the recording there. We'll sleep for five seconds and then we will stop recording here. <clears throat> So let's write that out again, control O, camera1.py. Let's switch back to our other tab and see if we can run that again. Another command line hint, if I want to go back to a previous command, I could type it all again, but I'm lazy. Lazy is good in programmers. So I'm just gonna hit up, which brings back the previous command. Up again, brings back the previous command to that. <coughs> and now we can just run that again. And hey presto, we can, oh, there we go. We've got some video, hopefully five seconds worth. Right. So there's five seconds worth of video. It's appeared in the file browser. Rather annoyingly, if we double click on that, it doesn't know what to play it with. The way to play video, from the command line at least, is OMX player. Let's do test.htab, and that will fill out the rest for me. And this should play back our video. Except it seems to play it back a little too quickly. One of the problems here is that H.264 being a slightly esoteric format, doesn't store the frame rate, the, the rate at which the frame should be played back, uh, or at least doesn't store it in a form that OMX player is actually going to take any notice of. So how do we convert this to a proper, in inverted commas, MP4 file that OMX player will play properly? What we need is a little tool called MP4 box. Like Python, the command line is case sensitive. So that's a capital M, capital P, capital B, lowercase everything else. I don't think this is installed by default, actually, so I'll just go through how to install it. You want sudo apt install gpack. I have no idea why the, the package is called gpack. Oh, never mind. Anyway, that's what you want to install to get the mp4 box command. It's, being, it's already the newest version because I've already got this installed on this Pi. But anyway, mp4 box is the tool we need. Dash add, test.h264, that's the input file name. Here's the output file name, test.mp4. And very quickly that produces test.mp4. Now if we play that with 
OMX player, it should play back at a normal rate. There we go, that looks more like five seconds worth of video to me. Right, that's better. So, we've gone through importing uh, the Pi Camera Library, initializing the camera, and taking pictures and taking video. Next time we'll hopefully get on to some slightly more esoteric outputs and also go through some debugging hints and tips with the Pi Camera Library. But until then, uh, leave a comment in case you want to tell me what you'd like to see in future videos, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye!